Yesterday marks the 52nd anniversary of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Some of us were too young. I was on the floor with a bottle of milk when it happened, but I'm still bothered by it, reading all the books I've read. I'm sure there have been a lot of books. What bothers me is the mainstream press at the time just accepted the government's narrative. It really wasn't investigated the case that much. No, the people who questioned the government were considered crackpots, pariahs. Attorney Mark Lane, a nutcase who wrote Rush to Judgment in 1966. But there's some questions we haven't answered, and we should still be asking those questions. The medical evidence. 16 doctors at Parkland Hospital who were in trauma room one for observation, if not work directly on him, said the back of the president's brain was blown out. It's a grapefruit-sized hole there. Uh, in fact, Tom Wicker was quoting doctors in a New York Times article on the 23rd, said he was shot a brain to the right temple and an entry wound, the doctors all said, above the Adam's apple. But the world was told the shots came from the back. Why was the president's body put in a bronze ceremonial casket in Dallas and removed at Bethesda, the site of the autopsy, in a pinkish gray working casket in a body bag? Why? Why did two FBA agents write in a memo at the autopsy? It looked like surgery had been performed on the right side of the president's brain. It looked like a Boy Scout patch. In fact, Dr. McClellan, who was in trauma room one, told Nova in 1988, that wasn't there before. Questions, questions raised by David Lifton in his 1981 book, Best Evidence, about who might have been involved in this. And there are all kinds of things you could say about CIA and motive by dark joint chiefs who were furious with Kennedy over the Bay of Pigs, not backing up the rebels, uh, not shooting down, or uh, our strikes against the missiles in Cuba after one of our U-2 pilots was killed, the fact that he wanted to break the CIA up into a thousand pieces. Remember the military-industrial complex of Eisenhower? Yeah, it was at its peak in 1963. I won't go on. The point of it is, we didn't ask questions then, and the mainstream press really won't ask questions now. Maybe it's time that they did. My two minutes, my two cents are brought to you by Edge Construction and Capital Consultants, Bill McCoshin, a lobbyist downtown who gets things done. We could talk about this and other things on the radio tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock on 92.1 FM, The Mic, The Mitchink Show.